Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2020 Chevrolet Equinox, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Supplemental Braking System. So there's gonna be a total of five main components needed to flat tow your Equinox down the road. First one's gonna be the base plate. Now that base plate is going to provide us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. The tow bar is going to be that second component. And this could actually be the physical link that connects the front of your Equinox to the back of your motorhome. Third main component is going to be your safety cables. And these are going to be there in the event of a unlikely disconnect. These are going to keep your Equinox attached to your motorhome. The fourth main component is going to be your diode wiring. So this is going to transfer the lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Equinox keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, we're going to have our braking system. The braking system is going to apply the brakes in your Equinox whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. That way it'll bring you to a more safe and predictable stop. So this kit is going to be a great choice for those of you that plan on flat towing quite often. Once everything's installed, it's more or less permanent, which makes setting it up every time you do want to flat tow extremely easy. More or less, you're just going to have to open up your door, come here to your G-Force controller, and flip this switch into the on position. And then from there, you just come to the front of your Equinox, take the tether that's connected to the back of your motorhome on the hitch, and simply just snap it around the breakaway switch here. And that's really all there is to it. Your braking system's active, and ready to operate whenever you hit the road. So really is a perfect system, especially again, for those of you that flat tow quite often. Now something I do think is worth mentioning, if your motorhome has air brakes, the Air Force One works very similar and is specifically designed to work with those motorhomes with air brakes. So something you wanna keep in mind. I will say if you don't flat tow all that often or really aren't looking for a permanent braking system. Maybe you change cars every few years and don't want to have to go through that trouble again. There is an option, a portable style option, which you can take out and put in very easily. And the one that I really like is the Blue Ox Patriot 3. It's very reliable, relatively small in size, and extremely easy to operate. So something really nice about this kit, as well as the other two that I just mentioned, is that they are all proportional. So what that means is the harder you apply the brakes in your motorhome, the harder the brakes going to be applied in your Equinox. So for example, say if you're just cruising, it might hit a stoplight, kind of come up to a rolling stop, and kind of just lightly push on that brake pedal, Equinox is going to do the same thing. On the other hand, let's say if you're going down the interstate and maybe have to come to a sudden emergency stop and you've really got to stand on that brake pedal, Equinox is going to match that pressure. So it's just gonna really give you a smooth ride, make your braking much more safe and predictable. And just overall, your driving experience is gonna be that much better. So this kit is going to have a safety feature and that's going to be the breakaway switch right here. So in the event of a unlikely disconnect, what's gonna happen is this tether is gonna pull out your switch, and that's actually going to activate the Equinox's braking system, helping to bring it to a complete stop. It's also going to have an indicator light there on the back of your rear view mirror. So every time you apply the brake or the braking system activates, those LEDs are going to light up. So that's kind of a quick way to make sure everything is functioning properly with not really having to take much time out of your day. Now, I would suggest picking up one more component to go with the braking system, and that's a vehicle charge line kit. Since the braking system does use the Equinox's battery power, if you go for long periods of time, it could potentially wear down your battery. So by using that charge line kit, it's going to use some of the power that your motorhome puts out to essentially trickle charge your battery. So that way, when you get to your destination, you're not gonna have to be worrying if it's good or bad or having to jumpstart your Equinox. You know it's gonna be charged up and ready to roll. 
So at the end of the day, this is probably my favorite permanent style braking system with how easy it is to operate and how reliable it is. It's a braking system you really can't go wrong with. It's just gonna make your life that much easier whenever you're flat towing your Equinox. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is pretty involved. There's a lot of different wires you need to run and components you need to mount up, but as long as you take your time, you should be able to get it done. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our install, we're first gonna wanna mount up all of our major components. Now, as you probably have noticed, I have the front fascia removed, and that's because I'm doing this install the same time that we did our base plate, because it just gives us so much more room to work and makes life a lot easier. With that being said, the first thing that we can mount up is the breakaway switch. So it's pretty straightforward here. In our case, our base plate actually had a bracket and so what I did was just take the breakaway switch, use a nut and a bolt, and secure it to that bracket. The next thing we can mount up is our main operating unit. Now I chose to mount this to the lid on our fuse box. Even when we mount it to the lid, we can still take it off easily, access our fuses, and everything else. So not really an inconvenience there. Now the way I mounted this, so I just drilled four holes in the cover, and I just used some large zip ties to zip tie the operating unit to the cover. You can still see the graph and everything else, and once I had it zip tied, I just used some silicone over the holes just to keep everything nice and dry inside. Now moving to the inside of our Equinox, we can focus on mounting up our indicator light, which just goes on the back of your rear view mirror and the light itself just has some two-sided sticky tape so you'll just stick it to the light or i'm sorry the mirror make sure the back of your mirror is nice and clean some rubbing alcohol before you do that that'll ensure a proper connection there once you have it stuck to the mirror we can route our wiring so this wire just goes up into the headliner and you can just kind of use your finger and work that wire underneath the headliner. So it'll just push that all the way across. And once you get to the A pillar, you can actually kind of just take your hand, create a little gap there, and just feed that wire down along that seam. So if you just take the weather stripping that runs along your door and just peel it back, you can see it opens up a gap there and you can just run your wire down along this gap all the way down until you get to here where these two panels meet. What you can do is just feed your wire through this panel and it'll drop out underneath the dash. So underneath the dash, you can see right here, this is where our indicator light, indicator light wiring dropped down and ends up right here. The next component we can mount up is our G-Force controller, which is this box here. Now there's a few things you want to pay attention to when you mount this. You want it to face the direction of travel, and so you want this knob here to face towards the front of our vehicle, and you want this to be as straight and level as possible. And right here on the driver's side kick panel is a really great spot. And so line it up where you want it, get it nice and straight, and it's provided with two self-tapping screws. So you'll just use a Phillips head screwdriver or screw gun to run them screws down into your panel. Then we can mount up our actuator cylinder, which is this here. And this will get attached to your brake pedal's arm. And it simply just uses this clamp to clamp around the brake pedal arm. I will say I did have to use the longer screws that are provided. The ones that come already attached are just a little too short. So swap those longer screws out. You're going to secure it down to the brake pedal arm. And what I did, those screws were relatively long. They came out maybe another inch or so. And just to avoid any interference with our foot when we're operating the gas, I just trimmed those screws up so we don't have all that extra overhang. Now on the back of our 
actuator cylinder we're going to have a cable attached to an anchor so if you kind of peel the carpet back and cut out a little opening you can see how i attached it be sure to double check behind your firewall to make sure you don't have any important components behind there before you drill with that being said i use the provided bracket use a self-tapping screw on this side then on this end I took our anchor, ran a self-tapping screw through it, through the bracket, into the firewall. So it's a very solid connection there. Now when you mount this anchor, you want this cable to be as straight as possible with the actuator cylinder. So this is a good example of how straight it needs to be. You do want to have a little bit of slack and your actuator cylinder and to check it how it would if it was operating you can actually push down on the brake pedal and pull that slack out so you can see that travel there it's nice and straight where it needs to be now to set this tension in the cable to make sure you have enough slack on this side there's a allen key set screw so you can pull the cable one way or another to give you more or less slack. When you find that sweet spot, go ahead and snug down that set screw. Now that our actuator sonar is mounted up, we can take our included airline tubing and plug one end of the tubing into the cylinder. So whenever you plug this in, you wanna make sure that the cut is nice and straight and clean. So you wanna use a tool like this a tubing cutter, utility knife, something like that. You don't want to use a regular pair of snips because it'll kind of pinch it and probably not get a great seal. So from that, it's a really good example of how it should look. No burrs or imperfections in it. And this is just a quick connect. So all you're gonna do is push it into the fitting all the way down, lightly pull back on it and make sure it's seated. That's all there is to that. So now that we have our components mounted up, we can start running our wiring and our nylon air tubing. So we're gonna take the other end of our nylon air tubing, as well as the wiring from our G-Force controller and find a grommet in the firewall. That way we can push our wiring and airline tubing into the engine compartment where we can continue to work on it. So here's the grommet on our firewall underneath the dash. You do have to kind of peel this carpet back, but it's a pretty large grommet. And so, so what I did is just very carefully drilled a hole in that far side of the grommet. That way we could run everything through. So you're gonna push your nylon air tubing through. The wires coming from the back of your G-Force controller. And I actually ran two more wires. Those wires are actually connected to our indicator light. So these are just some extra wires I had laying around. There is some wiring included in the kit. It may not be long enough, you may have to extend it, but with that being said, I used this black wire here with this piece of blue tape and connected it to the red wire from our indicator light. I just used a buck connector to pair them two together. The other wire is just a solid black wire and I used a buck connector to pair it with the black wire from our indicator light. So once I connected these, I ran them through the hole in our grommet as well. So now underneath the hood here on the driver's side, our wiring came up into the engine compartment right here in this area. It's a little tricky to see, but once you feed the wires through, they'll kind of pop up here and you can grab them. But you can see where our nylon air tubing and our bundle of wires kind of comes up. I ran it along the side of our battery here and made our connections. We'll worry about these connections in a moment. We'll just continue on hooking up our airline tube. So this just kind of loops around Kind of goes on the side of our fuse box and our battery. 
where it comes up and simply plugs into our main operating unit the same way that we plugged it into the actuator cylinder. Now when you're running anything actually that is coming out of the operating unit, remember you still want to have access to your fuses underneath this lid. So give yourself a little extra slack in the wires and the tubing. That way you can easily lift the lid up without having to stretch those wires out. So just something to keep in mind. Now as far as our wiring goes, we'll start with the white, yellow, and green wires coming from our G-Force controller. So those wires are going to get tapped into your diode wiring that you already have ran. So you're just going to use buck connectors. You're going to cut that diode wiring in half and tie in your G-Force controller wires. So for example, here's our yellow G-Force controller wire tied into one side of our yellow diode wire, put it in the buck connector, and then just simply take the other side of your yellow wire from your diode wiring and connect it in. So the yellow and green work the same way. The white one, there's one more thing we're gonna have to do. You're going to wanna take maybe about a two foot piece of white wire tie it into the other end of the buck connector and that wire is going to get grounded so here's where it comes out and what I did is just ran it back up along our bundle of wire up top here and simply just grounded it to this factory ground stud so I crimped on a ring terminal took off this nut with a 10 millimeter slid that ring terminal over and tighten it back down. Now we can do the red wire from our G-Force controller. This one's pretty straightforward. This simply just gets connected to the red wire coming out of our main operating unit. The black wire from our G-Force controller, what I've done is connected it to the extra black wire, the solid black wire that we ran to our indicator light. So that's this one here. So those two are tied together, and then the black wire coming from the main operating unit just gets plugged into that other end of the buck connector. Now if we move over to our main operating unit where our wires come out, we already hooked up the black and red ones, so we don't need to worry about those, but we need to hook up the blue and brown wire to our breakaway switch. So just routed that wiring down along through here. You can see it here. Kind of just goes underneath everything there. And this is where it comes out. So the orange wire and this black wire here, that's from my breakaway switch. I'll show you how I routed them up to this location in just a moment. But what we're gonna do with these is the black wire from our breakaway switch is going to get connected to the blue wire from our main operating unit. And that extra wire that we ran from our indicator light, the one that I put the blue tape on, that's this one here, that's going to get tied into this buck connector as well. The brown wire from our operating unit is going to get connected to the orange wire from our breakaway switch. What I've done though, is we're gonna have to run a wire up to the positive battery terminal. And so I just use this thicker black wire here, tied it into this buck connector, and this is the one that is gonna run up to our positive battery terminal. So before we kind of run up there and do that, we'll show you how I got the breakaway switch wires up here to begin with. So I just followed them behind my bumper beam and simply just routed them loosely along our base plate and there's where they go into the breakaway switch. So here's where that black wire comes up to the positive battery terminal. Now this is going to get connected to a fuse holder. So you're going to strip that insulation back, take a buck connector, slide that over the wire and crimp it down.
What we'll do is take our fuse holder, make sure that the fuse is not installed, and we're gonna cut it in half. We'll strip back both ends of that insulation. Give it a good twist to keep the wires nice and tight. We're gonna take that end, one end of our fuse holder, put it in the buck connector, and crimp it down. Now I am using heat shrink buck connectors. They just provide us with a little more protection against corrosion. The ones that come with the kit will work just fine. However, if you prefer these, you can pick them up here at E-Trailer. So since this is a heat shrink, I'll take my heat gun and seal up the ends. The other end of our fuse holder is gonna receive a ring terminal. So again, that just slides on and we will crimp it down. Now we can kind of just set this off to the side for now. If we lift up on our battery cover here, that'll expose all the terminals underneath. And the one that we're gonna hook our fuse holder up to is this one right here. So we're gonna remove this nut using a 10 millimeter socket. And some of these nuts aren't designed to come completely off. And if that is the case, we do have a solution, but when you loosen it up, if it kind of just stops, you know it's not designed to come off. So it's getting really tight there, so we're just gonna leave it at that. What we're gonna do, since we can't remove that nut, is just cut an opening or a slit in our ring terminal. So I get it just big enough to fit around our battery terminal stud there. So about like that. We'll simply take our ring terminal, slide that underneath the nut, and tighten it back down. Now I wanna mention, you don't wanna put the fuse in just yet. That's the very last thing that we're gonna do once we have everything hooked up. Now what we can do is tee into our vacuum system. So first thing you wanna do is grab the included vacuum hose that comes with the kit and our T fitting. The end of the vacuum hose is gonna get plugged into this one here. So these, this is just a barb fitting. So it takes a little bit of effort, but you just work that hose all the way onto the T fitting. So like that. And then on this end of our fitting here, we're gonna take maybe a inch and a half, two inch piece of hose, cut that to length, work that on. We're going to take our check valve and eventually you're gonna want this black side of the check valve to face towards the engine. So the clear or white side will get plugged to this end here. Now this is simply going to tap into our factory vacuum line. So if I kind of move that out of the way, I already cut it, but this is that factory vacuum line right here. So that'll come from your brake booster. I cut out maybe a two or three inch section there and on each end of the line, I took one of the provided hose clamps, just kind of slid that on for now. So what we're gonna do is push that line onto our barbed fittings. So that'll work over it. So I'll get pushed onto that one. Then I can come back, put your fittings over that connection there. I'm sorry, your clamps over the connection there. Yeah, and you're just gonna wanna snug these down. You don't wanna really crank on them because it is just plastic, so you don't want it to crack. You just want it tight enough just to help keep everything together. So 
So the other end of the vacuum line is just gonna get routed over to our main operating unit. So what I did is kind of just tucked it back, that opening there, just kind of came up along the side of her battery. And I just ran it down and up along our fuse block, the side of her battery. And here's where it comes out. There's a pre-installed check valve that just comes right out of your main operating unit. And so you're just going to take your vacuum line and simply just plug it onto that. If you want to, what I like to do on the rest of our connections is just use some zip ties, get it nice and tight, and that just ensures that these lines don't accidentally pop off. But that's your choice, something you don't have to do, but something I would recommend. So now that we have everything hooked up, before we tidy our wiring up and make it look good, it's a good idea to test the braking system to make sure it's working properly. So we'll take our fuse and pop it in the holder. That way it'll power up and we can see if everything works. So just a really quick way to test our system to make sure it's working is to pull our breakaway pin. Now, before you do this, you wanna to go to your G-Force controller inside and make sure that is flipped into the on position. That way the system is actually activated. But we'll pull this pin out. We should hear the braking system kick on and our indicator light illuminate. So the system's kicking on, sounds like it's working properly and our light is turning on as well. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco supplemental braking system on our 2020 Chevy Equinox.